Hello, good morning, welcome. It's Thursday the 28th of March. Today is going to be a little bit different because I had a massive failing of internet yesterday where basically all the internet in my area just went out for ages. So I wasn't able to access any of my online archives. But fortunately, this week we had a couple of absolutely cracking follow-ups um, sent in by listeners. So I'm going to read them instead. And to be honest, they're just as enjoyable, if not more so. <laughs> so it should be all right. On the plus side of things, when my internet did fix itself, I've now secured access to American newspapers as well as British. So going forward, we'll be able to alternate between American and English instead of just the year. So that should be exciting. I had a little look through them so far and the American papers seem equally as weird. So anyway, first up, we got an email from Matthew Hobson, which is a little bit strange in itself because I went to school with a guy called Matthew Hobson. So if you're 38 years old, Matt, and live in the Sussex area of England, I probably know you and that's really weird. But if you're not, never mind, it's still a little bit strange. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Matthew wrote in with an email concerning pedestrianism and basically the sport of competitive walking. And he said, In today's yesterday today, you expressed surprise at the interest in competitive pedestrianism. As competitive sport, it has a long history being rooted in the sporting wages of gentlemen in Regency times. I can do no better to recommend this book which is about a highly successful competitive walker and boxing trainer, Captain Barclay. It's an excellent read and gives a real understanding to the origins of sport in Britain and its context within Regency life. And the book's called The Celebrated Captain Barclay, Sport Gambling and Adventure in Regency Times by Peter Radford, which looks like a cracker and I will absolutely grab hold of that when I can, Matt. It looks like a belter of a book. Gotta find the whole thing hilarious. Just the eccentricity of pedestrianism is... is Bonkers. So yeah, no, I'll certainly be looking that up. Thanks very much. And next, we have a follow-up from Jen. And Jen was born and raised in Texas and has a little bit to say, or quite a lot to say, about our Judge Roy Bean from the other day. She says, As I was born and raised in Texas, I found your accent in the Monday, March 25th episode to be most amusing. Amusingly awful, just like any of my attempts at a British accent. I thoroughly agree. Um, <laughs> it was terrible. It's quite interesting that Judge Bean made the news in Britain, and the description of him as most autocratic and most original is very polite and a very British way to put it. His rulings have been described as a mix of annoyance, humour, common sense and absurdity. He is said to have threatened a lawyer with hanging for using profanity in the courtroom when the man said habeas corpus. He reportedly staged mock hangings to scare drunken criminals sober and created a reputation as a hanging judge. However, Judge Bean never executed anyone. This may have been due to his own botched execution at age 16 when he shot and killed a Mexican military officer during a gunfight. The officer's men set about to hang Bean, but the rope was too long and they were probably too drunk, so a lady friend was able to intervene by cutting the rope and freeing him. This left Bean with lifelong scars around his neck and most likely his mind as well. When he became judge, he was the only law authority in a vast region of the harsh, desolate Chihuahua Desert. The town of Langtree was originally named Vinegaroon after a poisonous native insect and there Bean opened up his saloon, the Jersey Lily, where he held court and kept a pet bear. A pet bear? Yeah, he did actually, that's what it says. He later renamed the town a wise choice, also in honour of Lily Langtree, whom he adored seemingly in a mildly obsessive fanboy way. She actually visited the town, but sadly arrived just ten months after his death. Hope you don't mind the random unsolicited facts about Judge Bean. I've included a few photos of the judge at his saloon, his hanging tree, a public notice of his fines and punishments, and his poor pet bear, which must have been so miserable living in the desert. I absolutely do not mind you sending those facts. It, they, they were fantastic. And the pictures are brilliant as well. It's, 
it's not really conducive to a podcast, but I will most certainly stick them on my Instagram for everyone to check out. Uh, that's at dark underscore histories if you want to have a look. But they're brilliant. I'll just leave it at that. So yeah, that's that's yesterday, today, today. I say come from forward from tomorrow we'll have regular episodes again i was a little bit strapped obviously with the kind of failing of internet but yeah going forward will be fantastic i've got english and american newspapers from now on so expect some more bizarreness from both sides of the pond that wasn't quite yesterday was it, it was essentially or it was kind of literally yesterday and this is today doesn't really work but it sort of does anyway i'll tell you what does work have a good one cheers <laughs>